Hello everyone and welcome to another beer review. Right, if you haven't seen the last video, because this is Christmas Day and Merry Christmas and I hope everybody's having a, a wonderful Christmas Day. Now this is about, just tell you what time it is. It's uh, quarter to one on uh, Christmas Day and uh, I thought I'd do two beers. I did a a Pilsner that wasn't a Pilsner from uh, the Hopstone Brewery and yeah oh dear anyway the least said about that the better but this is the main event so this is what uh, I would class as more of a kind of a celebration more of a kind of a Christmas beer so today we're reviewing Old Master Hen So it is, which might be better being shown from that side. Maybe, I don't know. So what's about this beer? So this is a limited edition strong ale. It's a 200 and, oh, 200. 2023 single batch, bottle conditioned. Um, it's 7%. I, I think I paid about seven or eight quid plus delivery for this. I got a couple of bottles actually. Um, so yes, it's bottle conditioned, signature brew. And uh, is there anything else about it? Scan QR code for the master brewer's tasting feature and how best to experience this exception earlier. Well, let's not. Um, Apparently has got exquisite depths, masterful brew. Anything else on it? No. Right, so, as you can see, <laughs> there's many layers to this packaging, as you can see. And then there's a little bit of an emblem in the top there as well. So let's see what it says. I don't want to kind of disturb it too much because it is obviously supposed to be um, bottle conditioned. So hidden in the depth of our brewery, a master is at work. They're always masters, you notice that? They're like... Mediocre. Well, that mediocre brewer's at it again. You know, you know it's always a master brewery. You know, a master brewer and a masterful brewery. So apparently crafting a brew this fine, this fine needs patience and time, experience and dedication. It's amazing all that. All these wonderful attributes. Do you think they actually put these kind of uh, adjectives and terminologies on their CVs? Do you think they put that? It must be wonderful reading the CV of a master brewer. You know, it must, must be an absolute cum fest. Mm, it really must. Oh. Breweries will tell you each brew house is unique. In its own way, our master brewery knows every nuance of ours and how to conjure the most magical flavours from malt, hops, pure water and yeast. It is the perfect marriage of art and science. Seriously. I'm surprised you didn't get a free butter knife with this good. By God, they're spreading it on thick. Um, this is his labour of love. A prized addition to the hen family of beers. Full bodied and warming. With masses of characteristic toffee. And fruit notes of citrus orange and traditional English hot bitterness. A beer to sip and savour. A masterful brew indeed. And that's why I bought a couple of them, just so I can enjoy it. Because if this is a nice one, I don't want to just kind of sit there and drink it as part of the the review and then that's it. So I've got some more to kind of sit back and enjoy my own time. But as you can remember, it's a case of you basically, you've read all this, you think, oh, this is marvellous. And then, of course, at the side of it, you've got Green King. Now, while Green King makes them okay beers they also make some absolute trite beers as well and uh anything with a bellhaven badge on it seems to be a right load of guff so i've had quite a lot of uh really poor beers that have come from green king with the bellhaven label on it so enough's enough you know you're sitting there listening to all this wax lyrical we've we'll, we'll got more stuff in the inside jesus god look we'll just show you this is trying not to disturb the bottle so much. I just keep moving about and kind of 
upsetting. Limited edition old master hen, this masterful ale is bottle conditioned giving the beer natural carbonation, complexity and depth of flavour that matures over time. Intense yet balanced, this strong ale lingers gently on the palate to delight the senses and make the moment complete. What kind of moment they're having? Should I be having a moment? Should I be filming it? Well, <laughs> YouTube will allow me to put it up and allow it to stay up if I'm filming a moment. But anyway, I don't know. I mean, I've got to admit, the Master Brewer's got a signature on like a bloody doctor because God knows what that's supposed to be. Does it mention his name somewhere? Because right now I can't, I can't read that right. But yes, so it's a, it's a limited edition. We'll just show you the bottle now. There you go. Um, I'm not really seeing much sediment in the bottle, in the bottle, in the bottle, in the bottom of the bottle. I don't know why I was having problems saying bottom of the bottle, but it seems to be okay now. Malfunction over, you know that type of thing. So there you go. Help if I turned it to the camera, wouldn't it? God, am I useless? Anyway, gonna have to beep that one out now. But anyway, let's see what it says. Ah, uh, it's just the same guff. Maybe not, but I'll read it anyway. Old Master Hen, full bodied and warming, with masses of characteristic toffee and fruit, notes of citrus here, we've got all that orange and traditional English hot bitterness. This is a beer to serve and savour, being bottled, conditioned to develop a natural sediment. So pour carefully to leave this behind. And there you go. Unless in the case of some people quite like a little bit of the old sediment. But yeah, so there you go. So hopefully this is better than Jeremy Clarkson's Hawkstone Pilsner. It's got to be. It's got to be. I've been looking forward to this. I bought this quite, quite some time ago. So yeah, let's see what we're going to get with this. Problem is, it's a straight. Now this is one of the problems. That's right. I'm going to leave it at that just now because I don't want to kind of overdo it. But yeah, that's what we're getting. So it's a slightly kind of dark copper. I would probably say um, I poured it very carefully, so I would probably say maybe get normally maybe a half finger head. But uh, again, with bottle condition, what you're going to get um, carbonation wise can affect things. Um, what you're actually going to get is that as a final product. So I'm not really too bothered about um, the head so much. It's more to do with the aromas and the actual beer flavour itself. But yeah, it's yeah, it's a kind of uh, copperish coloured beer. A slightly kind of darker hue to it. Um, it's not like an amber, it's a wee bit darker than an amber. Um, but also, I'm trying to think, it's slightly opaque as well. It's not completely clear, it's slightly opaque. Um, so there is. And in general, that actually looks not too bad. So it doesn't. So let's see what it smells like. Right, right, I'm getting malt. The, the flavour, the aromas, they're quite light. But I'm getting malt, a little bit of alcohol. And slight fruity tones, but very light. Everything, all the aromas are very light. So they are. Well, that's dialed right down. But yeah, the aroma's very subtle. Not strong at all. Very light. 
to the point that it's quite hard to distinguish. So it is. So anyway, let's see what it tastes like. There's something going a little bit wrong with this beer. Something's gone wrong with it a bit. In the aftertaste, just before the bitterness kind of comes in, there's an off flavour. So there is. An off flavour that I'm getting. And it's slightly kind of what we call wine-like. Slightly red wine. Not from the tannin side from the kind of acidic side as if options got in there and it is it is ever so slightly bordering towards the vinegar in the aftertaste but then you have the kind of bitterness coming in um, from the hops that are just kind of takes that away but Yeah, maybe the alcohol is also playing its sort of part as well because I'm getting a bit of alcohol kind of vapour as well as part of that, which tells me that if you're making a higher alcohol beer, then if you've got the malt right, a good example is probably Belgian beers, especially the triples and the doubles, triples and, and quadruples. Um, they get, they understand that the balance higher alcohol um, beers is the best way to balance that out with the ethanol is having the right amount of malt. The right amount of malt there does that. But of course having the right amount of malt there does obviously affect other flavours and you have to kind of try and balance that out as well. Which then basically means that you're going to make a, a richer beer and maybe what you would want to do and you have to kind of you know that that's the kind of the outcome of that that's the kind of uh the concession you have to make this is not as rich as i thought it was going to be and uh, the malt is lighter than what i thought it was going to be i thought this was going to be a very kind of rich deep malty ale kind of almost kind of you know christmas kind of tones of kind of dried fruit and everything else. I'm not really getting that. Yeah. There is that slight kind of off flavour in the, yeah, in the aftertaste. And I'm getting it on the palate after I've finished it. And I'm getting slightly kind of off tones on the back of the tongue and on the roof of the mouth. Yeah, I don't know that, that I mean, it might just be this bottle. Um, that's a good thing is what I'll do is I do have other ones. So I might do this one again and, and see what it's like. Is, is it numbered? No, there doesn't seem to be any kind of number on it, which is a shame. Because then I can see, you know, but I say that as a single batch, so it's all come from the same batch, so it'll be interesting to see. Um, so I might have to revisit this one again with the other bottle that I've got. But uh, in general, first impressions, not as good as I thought it was going to be, and nowhere near than all the kind of hype and the, the bump you're getting on the box. It's not a good Christmas, is it? <laughs> it hasn't really gone to plan. Oh, dear. Uh, <laughs> and it was quite funny because 
I was working out which beers to do for Christmas Day and which ones to do for kind of New Year's Day and obviously Hugmany and kind of things like that. And I thought that the ones that I've lined up, I thought that these are good ones for more Christmas and then these other ones because ones are kind of, I've got ones for New Year's Day that is kind of interesting because there's a 2023 aspect to it and there's another aspect to it from the past and everything else. And I think that'd be quite good for New Year's Day because it's two beers side by side for New Year's Day. And the Hogman A one, I've actually got a kind of interesting Scots one um, coming up. And again, it should have the flavours more associated with kind of a, a Hogman A or, or New Year's Eve based in Scotland and things like that. So I actually put a lot of thought into it and actually kind of uh, went out my way to try and get. There's been this one I purposely bought for the Christmas period, I wasn't quite sure how which were which one I was going to do it, whether it was Christmas Day or whether it was going to be New Year's Day. But I bought this, oh God, seven or eight months ago maybe, and planned for this and everything else. Now I bought it, but of course it didn't arrive till kind of uh, I think it was roughly about the summer time. It was around about kind of July, August time it arrived. So you know. It's actually quite disappointing. I will be totally honest, all speckled hens are nicer drop. To be totally honest, this isn't particularly good at all, and you are getting this kind of acidity in the back. It is a something, I mean, I, auction's got in, something's got in, but there's a slight vinegar tone to this. So there is, and no, it's not pleasant. It really isn't pleasant at all. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> why did I do it to myself? Seriously, why did I do it? <laughs> Even when you think you're doing it right, you know, you think, there we go, this just should be good. This this will be a good kind of culmination. Christmas Day, we can sit there, I can crack open this, we can review it, enjoy it, all this type of stuff. And it's a bloody disaster. It really is an absolute bloody disaster. I may have spent basically uh, quite a few quid on uh, a bottle of uh, wheat vinegar. <sighs> well, Christmas dinner today, I think I may have a salad to start with. <laughs> we have an interesting dressing to go with it. <laughs> Seriously, I can't believe that. I honestly can't believe that. Oh, it's been some bloody year, so it has. <laughs> Between the, the the horrible bell havens of the Scottish series. Ah, oh, Jesus. Ah, oh, God. I mean, I'll be totally honest. I'm actually quite surprised I don't swear more than I actually do. I mean, I honestly really do. I mean, seriously. I, th there is plenty of justifiable reasons. Some of my own making, I'll be honest, that really... I should be effing and jeffing all the time. I mean, really, I should be. I mean... That there shouldn't be a clean sentence in my vocabulary. There really shouldn't. I should not be basically uttering any sentences without expletives in it. It really is unbelievable. Oh, God. No. Bam! Even flavour-wise, it's hard to kind of tell you about this. I mean, there's malt at the start, there's malt at the front of the mouth and a bit of grain. But there's no real sweetness there. This is the problem. So the malt automatically feels a bit disjointed. And because of the grain's there as well, it's just going to... You are getting slight toffee tones at the front of the mouth. But again, they're overshadowed because the grain's there and you haven't got the sweetness to back up the toffee tone. So it feels a bit disjointed straight away in the front of the mouth. And it just feels that there's just, this is the problem with bottle condition. The biggest thing is you just really don't know what you're going to get sometimes. And with this one, it really hasn't gone well. Um, and that's why I'm saying maybe the cap hasn't been particularly good or whatever, or something's happened during the bottling process, but that's continued to condition. And it's conditioned badly in the bottle because I think 
oxygen and air or something that's got into it and uh, yeah it's kind of going more kind of oxidized to the kind of vinegar way it really isn't not strong vinegar but enough to kind of spoil the beer um I mean the lack of malt and the higher alcohol content and everything else it's just the front of the mouth is a fucking disaster. I'll be totally honest, it's an absolute disaster. It's a shit show. The problem is, though, it gets worse as you get onto the mid tongue because all these kind of dried, fluty flavours and everything else, well, they're out the bloody window because there's just the malt isn't there and the sweetness isn't there and it can't really deliver these fruity tones. Um, I keep drinking this for God's sake. It's fucking pissed. And I keep taking a sip of it as if, like, I'm hoping it's going to get better. <laughs> God, I'm almost gagging here every time I swallow the bloody stuff. And I'm still with it. What? Even when I'm left with the glass, my mate says, What the fuck are you doing? Put the bloody thing down, leave it alone. It's crap. <laughs> Seriously. Oh, God. Um, yeah. My tongue's a disaster. It's just a kind of continuation and uh, a prolonging of all the kind of problems and issues from the the front of the mouth. The thing is, though, you're getting more of the kind of alcohol vapors in there that is kind of adding into the kind of mid tongue that just kind of make the whole situation worse. And then, well, the piece of resistance is it's moving from the kind of end of the mid tongue over to the aftertaste. That's when the kind of vinegar edge really starts to ramp up. And th this is what you get. The minute you come into the kind of aftertaste, the first thing you're noticing is kind of vinegar tones. And then you're getting that kind of slight kind of hoppy bitterness coming through in that. But once it all kind of dissipates, you're still left with this kind of a vinegar edge on the back of the tongue and the roof of the mouth right at the back as well. And it's just like, no, this is not nice at all. This beer's gone, it's off. I mean, put it this way. If I was served this in, ca in cask, yeah, straight away, it's off, it's gone. Your cask is fucked. And it does, it reminds me, as I was saying in one of the other reviews, and I've said public I said, the last time I had a, a cask bitter was in a local beer, well, a local beer, a local pub down in Devon, quite close to me. And yeah, I had two sips of that. That was it. It was gone, totally gone, and it has similar tones. So it has similar tones with the slightly kind of acidic vinegar kind of finish to it. So yes, it's an absolute shit show and a disaster. And uh, my well kind of laid plans have been uh, been scuppered, well and truly. Well done, Green King. You know, you proved to me that uh, you don't have to be Belhaven on the label to make a beer a disaster. Yeah, well done. <laughs> Maybe I should have learned. Maybe I shouldn't have put my trust in Green King. <laughs> Maybe I should have been sitting here with a, a bottle of uh, Rudolph Ale from Green King or maybe a, a Ruddles or something like that. Maybe Ruddles Best, something like that, you know. At least you know what you're getting. Nothing brilliant, but it's okay. Better than this. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> so, what would I give this out of 10? <laughs> is it just going to be a first? I think it is, actually, because it's a clear bottle, so I can't even give you a mark for the bottle because it's absolutely bloody useless to me for... Uh... <laughs> for home brewing. Oh, God, seriously. It is. It's going to be a first because... Uh... Let's just say the Jeremy Clarkson Pilsner, the Hawkstone Pilsner, didn't go particularly well today. And Christ, near as this one. Uh, what can I give it? it the beer's bought. And I can only, maybe other people have tried it and think, oh, it's really nice and they've had a good bottle. But this is a problem with bottle conditioning and everything else. This bottle's fucked, basically. So I can only judge what's in front of me. And uh, yeah, it's an absolute shit show. Um, I'm going to have to give it zero. Zero out of ten. It's it's undrinkable. The bottle was useless to me. I, I I can't give it anything. Plus, it cost bloody enough. Um, and even without the kind of vinegar edge, it's not particularly good 
base flavours either. Um, I think maybe if they had better base flavours, they might have been able to carry it a bit, but no. But uh, it's another disaster for Murray St Edwards. So it is. Absolute disaster. Well, there's only one good thing about it. It's single batch, so thank God they haven't made any more. The downside is I do have another bottle that um, I'll maybe try and review again. I don't know. I, I might do it just to see if all the beers are affected because these are obviously, you know, there's a good chance then basically with what they say to me, they're going to be from different parts of the, the bottling line. And of course, obviously this, I think this has maybe been a bad bottle. But um, it'll be interesting to see. So I, I will review it again because I do have another bottle. But overall, absolute disaster. And uh, funny enough, I can't recommend it. So my, my recommendation is don't. Don't be as stupid as I was. Um, but at the end of the day, you don't know until you try. So at least I tried, but it's been a failure. It seems to be <laughs> an ongoing kind of uh, uh, theme for 2023. So hopefully, oh, I've just realized because I've got all these other crappy beers, because I've done other reviews of some of the Christmas beers that I'm going to release between now and uh, Hogmanay and they're a bloody disaster as well so if, if you want to basically come back and watch more reviews um, between now and uh, kind of New Year's Eve and uh, New Year's Day um, for me kind of getting annoyed and angry and just exasperated with the, the beer reviews then you're in for an absolute treat if you don't want to see me kind of getting kicked up, kicking off and getting annoyed and everything else, then uh, avoid these videos and uh, hopefully the ones that I do for um, Hugmanay, New Year's Eve and New Year's Day are a lot better. I think the ones for New Year's Day definitely should be a lot better because they are from a reliable, consistent brewery. They don't make a bad beer. What I would say is they might not make a beer that suits everybody, but they don't actually make a bad beer. And they seem to be a lot more reliable than most breweries. So I think New Year's Day should be okay. As for Hogmanay <laughs> or New Year's Eve, <laughs> that's a different story because this brewery, they're not a bad brewery, but they are very kind of one-dimensional in how they kind of do their beers. And because of that, they can be a bit hit and miss um, from that point of view. So it'll be kind of interesting. Uh, what I would say that this beer was quite, quite pricey on their website and quite pricey in the supermarkets. Although I did manage to get it um, reduced at B&M. So it says a lot about it from that point of view. And... I did mention it in the beer news. Now, there will be a beer news coming up, um, hopefully this week, to cover kind of November and December, because there's been a few kind of stories coming up, but there wasn't really enough to cover um, November, so there will be a beer news coming up between now and uh, New Year's Eve that I will be doing to kind of cover a kind of... November, December and the kind of end of year of what's kind of, and a slight review of what's been happening, but one of the, the beer coming up on New Year's Eve, um, I did mention about this and I did make some, uh, let's some say, less flattering comments when I was actually mentioning it in the beer news in the past, so uh, it'll be interesting to see what it tastes like. Hopefully better than this. <laughs> I really do. But anyway, enjoy the rest of your Christmas day. Um, I hope you're spending it with uh, loved ones and uh, people close to you. I hope you're having a wonderful time with great food and uh, really nice beer. 
and uh, enjoy it. Have a good time. Hope Santa's good to you because it was, wasn't to me. Thanks for watching. Cheers and bye for now.